This is the sin. Take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, or 6, chapter 6, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and go to verse 9. I want to make mention very quickly that I am reading from the English Standard Bible, English Standard Version, which is the same as the pulpit translation, which if you're reading the Bible that was in front of you this morning, you will be reading the same translation. However, I am going to address the fact that this is said in different ways in just a moment. So we're going to look at these passages, and then we're going to look at how they're said in the ASV, the KJV, and other translations. But this is our pulpit translation, so we're going to begin with it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Right there. If you're looking at the American Standard Version or the King James Version, it doesn't use the word homosexual. It uses the word abusers of themselves. Isn't that an interesting way of putting it? The NASB and the NKJV, the New King James Version, uses the word homosexuals, as does the English Standard, as we just read. And the NIV uses the word homosexual offenders. The Revised Standard Version uses the word perverts. The Greek word, which I'm going to have trouble pronouncing, arsenoikates. I think I got it literally means this. One who lies with a male as with a female or a sodomite or a homosexual. That's the good out of translation. One who lies with a male as a female, sodomite, homosexual. That's the word that no matter how it's translated in whatever Bible you're translating it in, that's what it means. That's the Greek word that underlies every translation that we have so we know what it means. Please turn to 1 Timothy 10. The person asks, where in the Bible does it talk about it? It doesn't just talk about it in one place, and I'm trying to show that this morning. We're not just doing a Bible drill here, but I think it's important to show you all of these passages. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. <coughs> Actually, I'm going to begin in verse 8 to give a context. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 says, Now we know that the law is good, if one uses it lawfully, understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine in accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted. Notice in 1 Corinthians and in 1 Timothy, there is a litany of things that no one would ever seek to defend. No one would ever seek to defend murder. No one would ever seek to defend drunkenness. Well, maybe, but most likely we wouldn't seek to defend drunkenness. No one would seek to defend swindling or lying. Lying is one. You know what? If, if, if there is somebody who, if, if, if there is something that, that, that we all hate, is that it's lying. Even people who do it. This is what they'll do. The person will say, well, yeah, I committed adultery, but at least I was honest about it. You know? Because we know we hate lying. 
And you know what I've never heard somebody say? I'm a practicing Christian murderer. I'm a practicing Christian liar. Then why do we say I'm a practicing Christian homosexual? That that should be so well understood that I could end right there, not going to, but that that's the point of it all. Because the argument is, well, just tell them it's okay. But we would never say murder's okay. We'd never say we'd say, yes, a murderer can be saved, but he must repent. But a liar must be saved, but he must repent. What then do we say to the homosexual? Repent not, for you need not? No. Based upon these passages, it is without a doubt homosexuality is a sin. I mean, if somebody comes to